Cool, everybody, welcome to another presentation. And actually the first, in this case, the first in the uh, series of Cold Fusion Dev Week talks. And again, I'm Charlie Earhart. Happy to be here. Thanks, Mark, for having me on and everybody at Adobe for coordinating this. So looking forward to the week. Happy to kick it off. And this isn't a keynote, but it serves in a sense like a keynote uh, in a way that you'll see in a couple moments. But just real quickly, um, for those who don't know, there's <clears throat> how to reach me, all my contact information. And those will also appear in the bottom right corner of every slide. So if you have any feedback or follow-up <clears throat> questions that we don't address during the talk, feel free to reach out. And I'll be happy to help with anything that we talk about in the presentation. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I am going to briefly touch on CF 2021 just because, you know, it's now been out for a couple of years. It's, it'll be two years in November. And lots of people still haven't moved to it. Or those of you who've been around long enough, you know that maybe you've moved to it, but you haven't taking advantage of it at all, right? You're just making your app work, making sure everything works, getting it up on the new machine or the new version. So there is a lot of new stuff and you should be at least aware of how those new things in 2021 are part of the modernization of CFML. But good news is that, believe it or not, some of you may be sitting on versions which have for years had modernizing capabilities that, again, you just weren't taking advantage of because you were focused on just getting your app working or adding features to it. And you weren't really thinking about how could I make it more modern? And we'll talk in a bit about why it'd be interesting for it to be more modern. And I break these into things that some people would think is all that matters like developer features. So updates to the language and enhancements and how scripting worked over the years, but not everybody is focused solely on development. So there's also modernizing of things like how we deploy Cold Fusion or how we secure Cold Fusion or how we, determine if our apps are secure and monitoring and support in various IDEs over the years for CFML. So there's, I'm telling you, these are all topics which I work with people every day in my consulting and I interact in the community every day. And I see that by far, many, many, many of these things I'm gonna talk about people don't know exist. And then finally, I'll wrap up with talking about how the community has evolved. Cause again, I find that sometimes people aren't aware that there's things in the community they can leverage and they have also modernized and kept up. And so we'll talk about that towards the end. All right, so that's where we're gonna go. Um, actually, I, I said yeah, the other slides will be available now. I forgot to get that posted just before the talk. We had some technical challenges beforehand on my part. So I'll get that up later, like I always say, or later. So I'll get that up when we're done. And it'll be at my site, careheart.org at the presentations area. And just get this out, because I don't think Mark said it. People always ask. The videos of these Dev Week sessions are being recorded and they should be online soon, whether it's days or weeks from now, we'll hear. And usually, previous years, they've been at the CF portal and that's the URL for the CF portal. Um, let me also make sure I can see the chat if there is any feedback going on. Okay, so, so far, so good. All right, just quickly about myself, for those who don't know, Mark had mentioned it, that I'm an independent consultant. I do server troubleshooting. That's really all I do all day, every day. And I help people of all sizes and experience levels. So if I can help you, let me know. I work remotely 99% of the time and was even before COVID and it's all safe and secure and easy and it's done by a shared desktop. And I can solve most problems in less than an hour. And I just wanna stress that because I see people struggle sometimes for days and weeks on forums and Slack and Twitter asking people back and forth and back and forth. And it's like, hey, look, we spent 15 minutes, we might solve the problem. So I try to teach you as we go, that's the key point. And you won't pay for time you don't value. So there's no really, there's really no reason not to at least give it a shot. And you can learn more about my rates and approach and all that stuff at the consulting page of my site. But to be clear, this talk isn't selling anything at all. We're just trying to help uh, everybody become more familiar. And in fact, I wanna say too that, um, I meant to say, uh, well, we'll see what I meant by that in a moment. There's other talks going on this week that are also, and that's why I said this is something like a keynote in that I can point out that there's other talks this week focused on modernizing CF. So the very next talk is going to be Luis Mahano on modern, functional, and fluent CFML REST APIs. And then it just keeps going from there. And I don't list every talk here, but look, I'm just going to go down the list and not say who it is or when it is, but look at the different kinds of things that are aspects of modernizing CFML or deploying CF in a more modern way or developing CF in a more modern way or integrating CF with more modern things. And that's talking about cloud databases. Um, 
and S3 and so on and on and on. And again, more than this, I don't mean to sh give any short shrift to anybody that I didn't list, but I just wanted to give you a few, a taste of what's coming up. And yet still, trust me, I find there's some very typical perspectives. You guys probably have heard these before. Let's talk about some of the things you may hear or see online. I haven't heard of CF since the millennium. And I didn't know it was even still used. The millennium, they're talking about 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Yes, it's very sad that people would say that. I had to Google what cold fusion is to understand why someone would try to bring attention to it. What is what I found is a proprietary system with an XML language. Like, what? What? This is cold fusion's language has nothing to do with XML. We could argue that CFML had its, you know, underpinnings and trying to mimic HTML, but you know, as you some of you know, and we're gonna talk about today, if you want, you can code your entire application now in script and never write a line of CFML if you don't want to. The problem with CF is not the language, it's problems the server. It's just a gigantic Java monolith. If you wanna use just a couple of statements, you gotta get a gig of legacy Java dependencies loaded. Now that was a fair point until CF 2021. If you guys don't know, there's really a much more uh, compact available download of 140 meg and you could be running CF in just that 140 meg. So it's definitely not what it used to be. And that's part of what we're talking about is changing people's perspectives. And the good news is that you don't always hear negatives and there's sometimes things that are actually help to put things in perspective. So one that I found was there's a huge fake news style of negative press surrounding CF that needs to be handled before this will turn around. Remember the adage, if you tell a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. Another comment was over the last five years, it's matured a lot. If, and this was from a couple to a few years ago. I'll tell you in a moment where I got these quotes. If it wasn't for the cold box framework, command box, package manager, Lucion Docker, I wouldn't be using it. But modern CF is pretty awesome, I think. Now, in my talk, I'm not going to be focused on how CFML's evolved in Lucy, although sometimes it did there first, sometimes it did in CF first. So my talk is really about Adobe CF. Uh, and I'll mention some of the uh, third party products that are related that are valued also. And then just one last thing before we move on. When most folks, and this is a quote, when most folks think of CF, they think of the version they used in 2005 with CF div and CF table and all that good stuff. Be serious, that legacy junk has been frowned on for a long time. The real cold fusion is a JavaScript like syntax with full object oriented functionality coming straight from Java, final and static functions, accessors, et cetera, functional programming features such as threading and async and locking. And to me, that's what cold fusion really is. Now, all these quotes that I've been listing are from a blog post or a couple of blog posts that Michael Bourne had put out. And these were quotes he'd gotten from other people. And so I'm sharing them here. And thanks again, Michael, for the, that blog post. It was very interesting. And there's the links for those if you guys want to check them out. And I'll just remind you that my presentation will be available online when we're done. And you'll be able to get these links. I apologize. I didn't get that up in, in advance. I meant to. All right. So let's first move on to those CF 2021 modernization features. And again, I want to be really clear. We don't have time for me to demonstrate everything. And this isn't really the main point of the talk, because even if you're not on CF 2021, I'm going to show you there's many things that have been modernized in even versions of CFML that might be several years old and you didn't know it. But anyway, about CF 2021, just real quick, a broad part of CF 2021 was enhancements to support of integrating with the cloud. And so there's now built in cloud message queuing integration with SQS and Azure Service Bus. And there's uh, AWS SNS and SES integration. And there's cloud NoSQL support. So Amazon DynamoDB and Azure Cosmos DB and multi-cloud uh, support for RDS, which is the RDS, not the ColdFusion RDS, but the database server RDS concept and cloud storage. Of course, we've always had it, S3. It's gotten improved, especially in 2021 significantly and Azure Blob. So you see there's a lot of coverage of a lot of cloud related things. And all these, by the way, are not enterprise, they're all cold fusion standard. So if you're on CF 2021 standard, you can do all these things so far. And I'll talk about the one or two things that'll be enterprise only. There'll just be a couple things that are enterprise only. What else is new in 2021? Well, there's DevOps oriented features. There's uh, the concept of that smaller zip or what they call the express installer. Again, it's under a couple hundred meg. 
there's a package manager. So if you do get that small core engine and you want to do some CFML that leverages something that's outside the core, then there would be packages available. Now, you can just get the full installer and not deal with this. But the point is, if you want to have, especially for automation and scripting, if you want to have a nice, small, tight installer, you could then optionally choose with this tool called CFPM, you could choose what components should be added to the engine, like to add PDF support or to add uh, database integration or to add mail support or to add, you know, on and on and on monitoring. So check that out. This is not a talk about what's new in 2021. We don't have time to get into that. There's also JSON base configuration. Now, some of you come from a world where you know about CF config within command box. It's been doing this for a couple of few years, really a few years. And I'll talk about that later. But um, CF 2021 adds its own corollary to that called CF setup. And so, yes, you can export and import JSON based rendering of your CF admin settings, all of your settings. You could totally script the settings. And again, I'd love to talk about that, but we don't have time in this presentation. And then I mentioned the installer, also CF Docker. There's there, CF has had Docker images for CF 2016, 2018, and 2021. And I just want to point out that the CF Docker images can leverage those three things as a part of, again, automating deployment on containers. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Other features new to 2021 that you ought to at least be aware that are there, SAML for single sign-on and logout and configuring both an IDP and an SP. MongoDB support is now built into ColdFusion. Uh, support of Azure Redis as a session storage option. The ability to use Redis as a session storage was added in CF 2016. That's not new, but use of Azure Redis cache is new. And addition of Elastic Cache Redis as, as additional distributed caching features. Those were added in 2018, distributed caching, but now you've got these additional options for distributed caching. And that, as far as I know, is the only thing that's new. The fact that those are, the, the distributed caching is, is in enterprise only. Those are new things that are gonna be only in enterprise. All right, moving on to language modernization. Some of you, this is what you care about. It may be all you care about. So let me just go through this list. I don't have time to demo them. I don't have time to show code. Just look at this list, just let it wash over you. CFFs of 2021 supports parallel programming in arrays, struct, and queries, supports immediately invoked function expressions, IIFEs, iterable objects with spread and rest operators, iterator support for CFCs, support for static fields and methods for CFCs, a new identity operator with three equal signs, case sensitive and ordered structs, the structuring assignment for structs and arrays, dynamic switch case and much more. Now, let me just stop for a second and say, some of you will be like, why do I even care about these? Well, let me just say the reason why I'm bringing this up is that you're sometimes going to be talking to people who you might be wanting to persuade them perhaps to become a developer on your team. And they come from another language and they think, oh, Cold Fusion is, is tag, it's old stupid language. And if you could show them that it has these things, I might go, wait, what? Cold Fusion has these things and I'm just getting started. So let's keep going. Um, I'll come back to more in a moment, just about CF 2021 wrapping up. Each of these things that were new in 2021 are indeed well-documented. And if you just Google their terms, you'll find them. Um, and also there were links offered in blog posts at the time of the release. So I did a blog post back then in November of 2020. Adobe did a blog post and a forum thread back then. And then there's the CFML uh, language reference page that discusses these new and changed functions uh, in 2021. Also, last year, one of the talks was Modern Semantics of Cold Fusion 2021. So in the Dev Week last year, it was more of a focus just on this. So anyway, that's there's the link for that video. Well, again, maybe you're not on 2021 and you may not care about this or you don't plan to ever go to 2021. Okay, I mean, that's, that's between you and others, but I'm just saying, uh, am, am I saying that you have to move to 2021? No, you don't. There's modern features in CFML that have been around for years. And this is the meat of the talk, which might blow some people away. <clears throat> They've evolved with each release. And I'm gonna chronicle those aspects of how it's modernized in each release. And I just wanna tell you the timeline just to give perspective, because when I talk about some version, you might go, when, when did that come out? How long ago was that? So obviously 2021, 2018, 2016, those numbers tell you what they are. But if you didn't know, 11 was from CF 2014 and 10 was from CF, sorry, was from 2012. 
So if I say something came out in 10, it came out 10 years ago. And you may not know that 10 years ago and for the last 10 years, you could have been leveraging this feature. And then just to, for perspective, nine and eight and seven and six, these came out in the years prior to that. And I'll mention a couple things that are really new for them that you may not have known were there because I just find and talking to people. And then of course, you have five and earlier from turn of the century, so quite old. All right, so on to the developer oriented evolution of things. And I'll show several different categories. You might be surprised. So first is script evolution. Some of you know that CF4 is when script came out. Again, we're talking about just before the turn of the century. So script has been there. And CF8 started to improve support for CF script. Remember, CF8 was from like 2007, and that still didn't float too many people's boats. And then if you didn't catch this, since 9, you've been able to write a CFC entirely in script. You don't even need a CF script tag. If you just start with the component statement and the open squiggly brace, that's it. It's all you need to start putting CF script into a CFC. No tag at all. And then this is the bigger one, is that CF11 added complete support of CF script. So things that you used to not be able to do in script, you can do virtually everything in script. So if you want to, you can do everything in script for all tags since CF11, which is eight years ago, eight years ago. And just a little side thing, if you didn't hear it, CF2018 removed the need to use semicolons. They're still supported, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And then this is very important. If you're new to script or you struggle to think, how would I do something in script that I would have done in tags or vice versa, Peach Fry Tags got an awesome free online tool called cfscript.me. And it's just two pages on the screen. You put your CF tag based syntax on the left, hit a button, and on the right, you see the script based syntax. It couldn't be easier. Is it perfect? Is it everybody's solve everybody's problems? Not necessarily, but it's been great every time I've used it. So I highly recommend it. Um, I see a question. Parallel programming in array structs is kind of wonky at the moment with scrup, scope corruption when mixed. Well, let me just say, James, that kind of thing, Hope if you found something you feel is a bug, I hope you've reported it at tracker.adobe.com because it's kind of unfortunate when people just say something like, hey, it's wonky and, and corrupts things. If there's a tracker link you can offer that I can point people to, just share it in the pod because if anybody's interested in that, they could check it out. Sometimes it turns out what people assert is corruption, turns out not to be. But if you've got a bug that's reported on tracker and it's proven with re reproducible cases, then I hope they'll fix it soon. That's my experience is that they will. They wouldn't want something like that continuing to exist. But as you can tell by my talk here, I'm all about let's get to getting proper information out there and not get uh, caught up in just suggestions and um, assertions. Let's get clarity. Anyway, moving on. And I see, uh, yes, yeah, script on me is a lifesaver. Thanks, Robert, I agree, it's a cool tool. All right, so moving on, language evolution. So I'm gonna tell you about several operators. And again, I don't have time to get into each one. I could talk about each one for a couple minutes or a few minutes. CF9 added a ternary operator. CF11 added the Elvis operator. 2016 added the safe navigation operator. Now, again, please, if you want to chime in just to say that you've had trouble with these. Again, that's not really the focus here. If you've had trouble, please report an issue on tracker.adobe.com. Let's get that trouble fixed. And when I say let's, I don't work for Adobe. I don't have anything to do with fixing bugs, but I'm just saying, Sometimes people complain about stuff, but they don't do anything about it. And you might think, well, that's because when I file bug reports, nothing happens. Well, I'll just tell you that's not true because usually a few times a year when they come out with updates, usually those updates have dozens of bug fixes. So they clearly do fix bugs. The last couple of updates didn't have any bug fixes and that's its own bugaboo, but we're not here to talk about that. Moving on. So CF 2018, check this out. Again, we're talking about modernization of the language. Did you know that CF2018 added support for lambdas and fat arrow functions in functions and even in tags as well as null support? Now, the lambdas here, is no, we're not talking about AWS lambda. That was added in 2021, but that's a separate subject. I'm talking about lambdas, the language feature, and fat arrow functions. And again, the point here is that if you're working with somebody that's a developer that comes from another language, they might go, wait, what? You can do fat arrow functions in CFML? I thought that was only in you know Python and JavaScript and uh, other more modern languages. So no. And then remember all those things I listed in CF 2021 that are part of the language evolution. Then there's functional programming. So lots of languages have moved to functional programming, closures and higher order functions. So has CFML. <laughs> Since CF 10, there's been these concepts already built in. 
including adding more in 11. So 11 added map and reduce and first class functions. And then 2016 added this for queries. And then 2018 added closures and tags and more things for sum and array, uh, every and splice for arrays and structs and queries. So anyway, just telling you the language has evolved tremendously and sometimes people are not aware and I'm just trying to make you aware. So check those things out. Again, you can find docs for all of them online. And if you don't find them in uh, cfdocs.org, that's not a perfect representation of all the docs that are available. Go to the Adobe docs and sometimes you'll find things are documented there that may not yet for some reason be in cfdocs.org. Again, we'll talk briefly about that uh, other community stuff later. So move it, and I'm not saying that to denigrate any community stuff. I'm just saying sometimes people say, I didn't know this stuff was here because they're looking in places that don't highlight there's new stuff. Of course, the CF docs highlight there's new stuff and they tell you when there's new things and when they come out and what version they came out in. So anyway, moving on, threaded and parallel processing. So even all the way back to CF7, some might remember that we had CF thread that allowed you to basically do a fire and forget of some code that ran in its own thread and you could either let it go or join again later and check on the status of it. And then CF2018 has taken this a lot further with what's called run async and futures, which are like promises. So again, if you come from a language or have experience with futures or promises, yes, yeah, CFML's had that for now four years. And if you're just focused on doing your job, you may miss that. But these are the kind of things that sometimes people kvetch that, man, if I could just do these things, you know, I just can't wait to get to another platform like Node where I can do these things. Well. You can do them in CFML right now. Uh, and then 2021 added parallelism in various features of the language. And again, I know demos would be awesome, but we don't have time. And there's James sharing a link to the tr uh, Slack discussion and tracker was down that day. So I hope one of you will clarify if maybe it got filed as a bug report. Thank you for that. And again, if I did demos of all these things, we'd be here all morning. So let's move on. Member function evolution. So again, I don't have time even to explain it, but if you know what member functions are, they were introduced in CF11 eight years ago and more were added in 2016 and still more in 2018 for different kind of things. So it's just evolved and evolved and evolved and 2018 added the ability to chain member functions and then 2021 added still more. And I'll just leave it at that and say this, you know, member functions have evolved a lot over the years. So have structs. So people that do structs, you know, we've had structures forever. I don't know, back to CF2 or one. I, I couldn't find the documentation to say when it started. And it was done with the struct new. Well, as some of you may know, CF8 added this implicit notation where instead of saying struct new, you could put the squiggly braces and that implicitly created a struct and, you know, brackets, square brackets. Sorry, I shouldn't have had squiggly braces around those. Should have been parentheses, um, square brackets around the arrays. So I'll, I'll fix that before I push it up. I hope I'll remember to do that. Um, and then 10 added the ability to even put colons for the separators in a struct. And again, that's a nod to languages that did that that way. If people were coming over to CFML from another language, having to say, you know, key equals value, they might have felt that was clumsy. I want to say key colon value. Okay, well, in 20, 2012, 10 years ago, Adobe added the ability to do colons as separators. And then 2016 added the ability to help you forcefully declare whether you wanted a struct to be ordered or sorted. And there's a difference between those two. I'll leave you to look into that. And then 2021 has added the ability to control the case sensitivity and ordered case sensitivity of structs. So these are sometimes issues that people, again, will moan, I hate how this happens with CF with my structs. They don't look right. Or when I serialize them to JSON, they're not what they're supposed to be. Those things have been addressed more and more in more and more recent releases. Speaking of which, let's talk about JSON. So it was actually CF8 that first added the ability to support serialization to JSON. Let me just say again, and we're talking about 2007. So CF's been doing some of this stuff for a long time, but maybe not everybody liked what it was doing. So it's been evolved over the years. Um, one thing is that at that time, they added the ability on a CFC method to indicate the return format to be JSON. Otherwise, it defaulted to plain or WDDX, depending on the circumstance from which the call was made. But anyway, and you could return JSON from various tags and functions. And then that's been evolved. So they added the ability to serialize queries in CF11. And they even added a custom serializer to let you control how the serialization went. And then 2016 went even further and added the ability to declare metadata 
to describe the data types for the serialization. Now, again, these are the kind of little things where if you're just looking at the you know docs for how to do serialized JSON, they may or may not mention, hey, did you know that you if you put in a, a, a application CFC property of serialization.struct metadata, they often do. I don't mean to say that they don't, but I'm just saying either they do, but they're only in the Adobe docs and you're not looking there, or they may not and somebody missed adding it. And again, there's places to share feedback. You can file bugs with the docs at tracker.adobe.com. So anyway, moving on. Um, and update two of 2016 even added the ability to do a struct set metadata to control it at the programming level. And then 2018 added uh, solutions to fix problems with, you know, whether you quoted Booleans or had numbers in strings, would they remain as Booleans or become Booleans or would they remain as strings or become numbers? That's controllable. You can control that with settings. And I even did a blog post on that. So anyway, moving on, 2021 has finally added a return type of JSON for a CF query or query execute if you choose to use that. And there's JSON, JSON array, array, and the traditional query as ways to return data from a query. So you don't have to do even a serialized JSON. You could just say, hey, the result of this query should be a JSON uh, output. Okay, and then some other stuff there just for those that might be interested, I'll leave you to that, read about that. All right, moving on. CFCs have also evolved. So CFCs came out in CF6. We're talking about 2000. Uh, two, something like that. CF8 evolved them a little bit. They added support for interfaces. Those that came from Java especially would have been familiar with it or other languages, object-oriented languages. CFs had the ability to do interfaces. It had the on missing method to handle calls to a method that didn't exist. And people started leveraging that for clever ways to do things that uh, were intentional to uh, call a method that didn't exist and have it handle it in a way that was special. And then nine added the ability like I said, to do script, entirely script-based CFCs, and also added implicit getters and setters with an accessors equals true uh, defined on the component. And the new keyword was added to impl uh, implicitly invoke CFC. So you have to use create object or CF object. You could just say variable equals new CFC name or path to the CFC. And there was an on CFC request method added to application CFC, which like on request handles every call into a CFC that's made by HTTP, it would handle calls to CFCs differently than calls to CFMs. And so again, on CFC request is like a corollary to on request. I'll leave it at that. If you're interested in that, check it out. 10 added implicit, and we're still talking about nine and eight, right? And 10 added implicit constructors and method chaining and 11 added in oh, uh, in invoke implicit accessors and, um, that again is an application CFC thing. So again, I'll leave you to explore these things if they're of interest to you. And we're still not done. We're still just in CFCs. So 2018 added abstract CFCs and methods, <clears throat> subtyping and covariant method return types, final variables, methods, and components, default functions and interfaces. And then 2021 added static fields and methods for CFCs and iterator support for CFCs. And also the ability to do property shorthand um, for creating keys with the same name when you're passing a bunch of things in to an assignment. So again, I'll leave you to look at the examples. I'll just say this, two, two things I want to say one more time. One, if any of these float your boat and you're interested, just Google cold fusion and that word. And on almost always Google or whatever search engine you like to use will take you to the docs for it. And it may be the Adobe CF docs for it. And you should find ample ex explanation. And I, I, I know I say this somewhere, it could be coming right up. The, the docs often have tremendous examples now, and people used to complain they didn't. Now they do, especially the newer stuff. They've been really good about putting examples in. So you'll see real examples, and they'll even often have a link to the CF Fiddle site. I'll talk briefly about that later, but that's an online site where you can run code without you installing Cold Fusion. You can just run it, and that was cffiddle.org, cffiddle.org. But anyway, moving on. The second thing I wanted to say is, why are we talking about all this stuff? Because some of you perhaps are more um, manager types or your uh, developer leads. And I was saying one reason you'd want to know about this stuff is um, if you're bringing on prospective new developers, they may be coming from other languages. So sometimes if you could help them see that CF did these sort of things, they wouldn't necessarily cringe at the thought that the, like those earlier quotes, oh, it's this old crappy language from a long time ago. This might help either you to take advantage of things that you 
wish you could do better or help you guys, you folks, whoever's involved in bringing other people on, help those new people see that the language is really far more evolved than most people would realize. Let me just look at uh, some of the comments. I love the custom serializer. Yep, good, good, good for you, James. Thank you for that. Um, excellent, excellent. All right, cool. Let's move on. We're about halfway uh, through our time and more than halfway done with the talk. So some other feature evolution beyond the language, right? So that's about where I expected to be. Half of the talk is really about the introduction and the language oriented features. Now, what about you who don't do development every day or in addition to doing development, you're also responsible for deploying CF or securing CF or monitoring CF. Let's talk about that. So first about deployment, of course, we've had an installer for CF forever. And CF6, if you didn't know, added a silent install. So <laughs> I have people often who say, oh, the thing I hate about that CF stuff is I got to install it and sit there and go through the UI. It's just crazy. I can't believe I have to do that. No, you don't have to do that. You could do a silent install. And it's been in the documentation for you know 20 plus years. You've been able to do silent installation. You've also been able to do war file deployment. So a war file is a Java packaging of things, and you could package up your app and the CFML engine all together as a war. And even 20 years ago, you could have deployed that on WebLogic or WebSphere or Tomcat or JBoss or Wildfly now. And I've been helping people do these things. And some of you may know that under the covers, that's what CommandBox does. CommandBox leverages the war file deployment capability of CF. And that's how it does what to you looks like a CF instance starting up. But under the covers, they really deployed a war file under the covers. All right, and then you may know, but many people don't know, CF8 added this thing called a car file, and that would allow you to import and export CF admin settings from one instance to another. That's not new. Now, I didn't think to mention this, but let me say it now. CF11 did change things where that is now available on standard. Unfortunately, in CF8, 9, and 10, car files was only in enterprise. And I thought that was really a shame. And I'm really glad that in 2014, eight years ago, they changed the ability to do it to standard. And the problem is a lot of people don't know that, right? Because they weren't paying attention when the new version came out and they're not even aware that perhaps for years they could have been using car files to deploy admin settings. So anyway, that's, that's there. And then command box came out in 2014 I'm just talking about deployment options. So we've talked about command box for deploying CFML engines. And now I'll get back to CF config in a moment. And then in 2016, Adobe started offering Docker images. And I'm going to talk more about those in a moment. And in 2016, they also supported the Amazon AMI way of doing deployment of Cold Fusion. So you can just buy a subscription to an Amazon machine image and run it in Amazon AWS. You don't buy CF per se. You don't even install it. It's pre-configured and pre-licensed and you're just paying uh, a per minute or per second price to, to run it. And it's enterprise. Anyway, moving on. Command box CF config. I mentioned that as um, the, the way most people think of when they think of JSON-based export and import of admin settings. That was actually uh, came out in 2016. Sorry, 2018. <clears throat> I'm just looking at my clock uh, on my phone to make sure I'm doing okay on time. So, and then 2021, I mentioned, added that zip installer and there's a CF install that goes with it. So after you do the zip installer, you run the CF install bad or SH file uh, to do some finalization of uh, things like the license, accepting the license key and uh, stuff like that. And then I mentioned the modular package-based deployment and I mentioned the JSON-based config that's called CF setup. So those are ways that CFML has evolved in how you deploy it. And heck, again, we could have a whole talk just on these things that might blow people's away, minds away to think that those were possible. As far as Docker, well, in 2018, that's when Adobe came out four years ago with the CF 2016 and 2018 Docker container images. And then in 2021, sorry, in 2020, when it came out, they added the CF2021 image. So those have been out for a while. Now, some of you may know that Ordis offers command box Docker images for both CF and Lucy, and they're different from each other. And in fact, my talk at Into the Box uh, about seven, six weeks from now is going to be on understanding the differences between the Docker images from Adobe and from Lucy and from command box and command boxes, Lucy and CF images. They all do things slightly differently. There are ways that some are 
more helpful than others about something and it's not always in the favor of what people would think. So anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at that when we get to that talk later. And the Adobe images were at first offered by a site called Bintray and that threw a lot of us off because like, what the heck is Bintray and why aren't they a Docker hub? Well, just so you know, they are for about the last year plus, maybe two years, they've been at Docker hub and also at Amazon ECR. So people that do traditional, you know, looking for stuff could find Cold Fusion now on Docker Hub and on Amazon ECR. <clears throat> and I mentioned that the Adobe images support some of those cool new things. So it supports, even when it came out in 2016 and uh, for, for 2016 and 2018, it supported configuring the admin settings via a car file. So if you had created a car file based on some stuff that you'd configured in an instance normally, you could then take that car file and put it into a particular place within the container in your Docker file or in a volume or whatever, and you would be able to start that container and it would automatically do that configuration of the admin setting. Or you could do a script, a CFML script, and you could call the admin API. So these are ways you could configure a container originally in 2018 and 2016. And I just wanna point out timeline-wise in 2018, the company called InLeague published what they call the CF Swarm Guide to CFML Docker deployment. And I just want to make the observation that if you have not done much with Cold Fusion Docker images, you might want to check out that InLeague guide. Again, even though it's a few years old, hasn't really been updated. Um, Swarm is not as you know popular as it was back then. Kubernetes has taken off. By the way, this Cold Fusion, these containers can run in a swarm or in a Kubernetes cluster, absolutely. And again, I've done talks on CF Docker images and previous CF summits and uh, other things. So you can find talks about that from me on my website. Look in the bottom right corner. There's my domain name, carehart.org. Go to the presentations area and you can find much more on these topics. But I just want to move on and say that uh, it was that CF 2021 new variation where they added the ability to import those config settings via that JSON. So if you'd created them with that CF setup tool, you could just, again, put them in the Docker file and CF would automatically import that JSON during the startup of the container. And they also added the ability through environment variables to name those and to name the packages or modules that you wanted it to use on initialization. So again, it's just evolved a lot. Uh, and there's my mention there. And you can definitely deploy on cloud services and et cetera. And there are Adobe images for each new update. I'm saying not just CF versions, but each update. So there's an image for CF 2021 update four and update three, and they've added those as each release and update came out. All right, moving on, like I said, I could talk a lot more on that, but we don't have time. So talking about security evolution. So listen, everybody, because you're all by and large, you're developers, right? Did you know that CF8 came out with a manual called Developer Security Guidelines. It was written by Pete Freitag. I'm not talking about the lockdown guide. I'm talking about the Developer Security Guidelines. And then it was updated up until CF11. They stopped updating it at CF11, not quite sure why, but just if you Google that term, you will find hopefully the CF11 version. And it's great. It's a discussion of how to secure your code. And of course, some things have changed since then and you should you know look into other resources like OWASP and even uh, Wikipedia has great resources on security. Pete Freitag himself has great resources on security. And I'll talk about some other things in a moment, but I'm just saying even this bare bones developer security guidelines document was really valuable. Uh, and Terry, great here. I'm not sure what you're referring to, perhaps the Docker stuff, um, but whatever, glad it helped. Um, and initial, um, the initial version of the lockdown died, guide did come out in CF8 and it's been updated with each release even to, to CF 2021. And Pete came out in 2009 with his tool called FuseGuard. FuseGuard is a web application firewall for Cold Fusion. And he came out with his service called MyCF, which sounds scary, but it's a great tool. Those that know it will say, oh, you got to get it. It's It checks your server and makes sure that you've got the latest updates, latest CF updates, JVM updates. You've uh, not done important security things to secure your environment. And he's looking uh, both from the outside and from the inside through um, a special CFC he implements. It's only for you, only he can reach it. Again, I don't have time to get into that, but it's a great service. I highly recommend it. Uh, and on his website is a quote from when it first came out saying, I think everybody should have Hack My CF. So I'm really a big fan of it. Uh, 
All right, moving on, <clears throat> CF10 era. If you didn't know this, there was a lot of stuff added. Okay, cool, Terry saying the developer security guide would have helped. <clears throat> the CF10 added a lot of improvements to security. Again, CF10 was from 2012. So in 2012, there was a lot of security improvements in CF and CFML for things like cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery and um, carriage return line feed hacks. So again, look at the resources that came out at that time frame or that have continued to be discussing these things since then. Lots of security improvements. And then CF10 was also where they came out with what's called the secure profile, secure profile. So that's basically a single checkbox, which makes about 20 admin settings be their most secure setting. So for years, I mean years, right? This is 10. They were telling people, hey, do this, do this, do this, make it more secure. And they finally said, look, we're going to stop asking people. We'll just give them a checkbox. During the install, you could say, hey, make these 20 settings more secure. And that's what the secure profile does. And some people don't know this. When you made the secure profile enabled, at least as of 11, it also changed your CFML so that if you did a CF HTTP and didn't do an add token, it would default to no. There's news that that's coming up soon in uh, Lucy to be just the default. At least in CF 11 and above, you, I think maybe even in 10, but I know in 11 and above, if you turned on secure profile, that was another benefit. By default, any CF HTTP you did, you didn't add the add token, it defaulted now to no, which is important for security. I'm not going to get into it any further than that, other than to say that's a big surprise for some people. And it was a built-in feature of turning on secure profile. And uh, ORM for database, I can encrypt, encrypt, whatever method I like. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, <laughs> and nostalgia for older times, and uh, Carl commenting on Hack My CF. Yep, great stuff. And uh, he mentions that it lets people know of updates before Adobe. I guess what you're thinking of is that you're a customer who's on file with Adobe as having bought Cold Fusion, and eventually Adobe sends you an email telling you that because you bought Cold Fusion, hey, be aware there's an update. Sure. A lot of people don't aren't the one who buy Cold Fusion anyway, so they wouldn't even know that such emails ever came from Adobe. So that's the real benefit of Hack My CF is that often the people that are responsible for servers or their development environments, they're not getting any emails from Adobe because they didn't buy it. Maybe they didn't, nobody bought it, right? They're just developers and they run a hosting company or they work in an organization where somebody down the hall or in another building or another city bought the Cold Fusion license. So yeah, you want this Hack My CF to be kept aware of the state of things. And there's other resources for keeping up with that, but let's move on. So CF11 added anti-SAMI support built into CFML with safe HTML and get safe HTML. And it was configurable in ways beyond the default behaviors. And then 2016 added the security code analyzer. Now, one thing I wanna clarify about this, this is a feature, let me just back up. This was a feature added to CF Builder. I know everybody doesn't love CF Builder, it was added to CF Builder and it integrated and talked to your Cold Fusion backend. And unfortunately, when it first came out in 2016, it only worked with Enterprise, which I was really bummed to see because I thought it should have been for everybody. Well, finally in 2021, I found that it's working for standard and developer. So I did a blog post on this back in 2020, 20, early 2021. So definitely, if you haven't looked at the security code analyzer, even if you never want to use CF Builder for any other purpose, you should at least be aware of this and take advantage of it. I need to do a talk on this because a lot of people don't know about it. But moving on, same site cookie support was added in CF 2016. And the administrator was no longer available via an external web server call by default. And again, they were telling people for years, stop, do that, don't do that, stop doing that. And finally, they implemented some configuration changes on the covers that make it be that by default, you can't get to the administrator through IIS or Apache or whatever web server you might be using. You have to use the built-in web server. And again, that's all configurable. We're not here to discuss that. Let's move on. 2018 added an auto lockdown tool. So that would, again, they kept telling people the lockdown guide, here's 20, 30 things you could do to make your server more secure beyond even just secure profile, things about your CF user and things about your web server configuration. Well, they finally in 2018 just said, hey, look, if you just want us to do as secure as possible, just run this lockdown tool and we will do it. Now I'll tell you, I'm not a big fan of it myself because I feel like it's very heavy handed and you don't get any choice. It'll do everything. And some people find that when they have it do everything, 
then their hands are tied in all kinds of ways and they go, oh, why'd we do that? So anyway, it's, it's, it's not for everybody, but it's for some people. So again, it's added in CF 2018. Check it out. If, if you're hyper-focused on security, you should definitely check it out. Motion detected at Sorry your front that. door. So, and then 2019, I just want to point out related to security that 2019 added the, uh, Foundeo added the Fixinator tool. Pete Freitag added the Fixinator tool. And that Fixinator tool is an alternative, we could say is an alternative to the security code analyzer. And I would definitely recommend that people consider looking at but either one or the other, just get some tool that'll analyze your code. That's what the uh, Fixinator does, is it's another way to analyze your code. So I'm took it, putting a motion snooze on my ring. All right, so a very cool tool. Sorry, Pete, that that came out right as I was talking about Fixinator. Didn't mean to get distracted, but that's a great tool. I highly want to recommend you check it out. All right, moving on. Ways that CFML and Cold Fusion have evolved regarding monitoring. So some of you know that Fusion Reactor and C-Fusion came out both the same year, actually, back in 2006. And over the years, they've evolved, especially Fusion Reactor. C-Fusion's kind of um, stopped evolving a few years ago, but it's still valuable to many people. And Fusion Reactor just came out with a release last week, and I did a blog post on what was new. So anyway, check that out. And then the CF server monitor came out for enterprise only in CF8. And then 2018 added what's called the PMT, the Performance Monitoring Toolkit. And that's for both standard and enterprise and the developer edition and the trial edition. So if you haven't checked out the PMT, you ought to. And again, I should do a talk on that. I've not done one. Uh, others have, and I've pointed to resources that others have done, but I ought to do another one. Um, and it replaced the server monitor. So you no longer use that server monitor that came with eight, nine, 10, 11, and 2016. You you can't use that anymore. It was flash-based anyway, they never changed that. So 2018's PMT is in 2021 and above. Command line interface, CF8, CF5, believe it or not, had a CLI, had a basic CLI. And then a lot of folks don't know this, but 2016 revamped it with a more capable CLI, including the ability to name a file to execute. And then 20, well, I'll get back to that in a second, uh, and the Docker images support using CLI to execute a single file. So if you didn't know it, you can use the Docker images and on the run, if you were doing it from the command line, you could say Docker run, the name of the image, name of the file, and it would just run that file, which could love you could leverage that for um, CIC and other approaches, other means, testing as well, um, like on your own. But anyway, now check this out. A lot of people don't know this 2018 added a true REPL. So that's very different than just the old CLI, but many people didn't pay attention to it. And Command Box has long offered, Command Box was originally focused on being a REPL and a CLI for Cold Fusion, and it's definitely more capable. I don't deny that. Again, I'm not trying to debate these points. I'm just pointing out that CF has these things. Sometimes people don't know it. Command Box often has added them beforehand and does it better, many people will think. And that is for both CF and Lucy. And that too came out in 2018. Actually, I think it came out sooner than that. I don't know why I said since 2018. I'm pretty sure, Command, yeah, Command Box has been out longer than that. Wasn't it 2009 I said? So I apologize for that. I don't know why I said that. Um, don't know why I said since 2018 there. Anyway, let's move on. ID and editor evolution. Let me look real quick to see if anybody's got any, nope, no comments yet. Um, so CF Builder came out in 2010 and it replaced Dreamweaver and the old classic CF Studio and Home Site and Home Site Plus. Now it was built and based on Eclipse, which was a Java engine. And of course, Cold Fusion Undercovers is Java. That might have made sense to some people, but many people are not fans of CF Builder and that Eclipse nature. And so it hasn't taken off as much as some people would have perhaps preferred. For those using other languages, there have been extensions for other languages. Sublime, Notepad++, IntelliJ, Atom, and others. And then VS Code came out in 2015. Yeah, it's been out now seven years. And it quickly gained traction and became the most prominent. And there are multiple CFML extensions for VS Code. There's two primary ones and really one primary one. And I'll leave you to investigate that when you use the VS Code feature to search Cold Fusion or CFML. What comes up first is usually the highest rated one. Um, Kama, Sama, K, I can't remember. That's always a hard one to remember. Everybody fumbles over it when they speak of it at con in presentations. Um, and there's Luis adding. So uh, 
is that can you was that 2009 Luis I believe I said that earlier and I just slipped in saying 2018 but he's sharing a link to a I guess a blog post of when it came out wow it was project Gideon oh, that's interesting all right moving on um 2021 check this out if you haven't heard it Adobe announced in 2021 that they do plan to change CF Builder from being Eclipse based to being VS Code based and I think Later in this week, we might hear a talk on that, and Mark might even chime in with some specifics. And I believe there's even now a uh, public pre-release you can sign up for. But I'll leave others to uh, attend to that. I'm just saying, good news is coming for those that use VS Code. Adobe will offer their own plugin. Now, again, I say good news is coming. Somebody's not going to like it. Someone's going to think it doesn't do what they expected it to do. Someone's going to think it doesn't do what. Uh, other CFML ones do. They're going to say it doesn't do what other languages extensions do. So it's going to be the first version. I'm sure there's going to be months, if not years, of kvetching about it. That's just the way it is in our community. But let's see how it looks when it comes out. I'm just I'm waiting to see like everybody else. Uh, so it's due to be coming out this summer. Yes, VS Code for the win. Yes. All right, and then wrapping up, I want to talk about evolution in the CF community. So I've talked a few times about CF oriented code. Uh, tool, tool makers, and I just really want to highlight, while some have come and gone, many still stand and are still evolving all the time. Ordis, I've mentioned several times with Command Box and Forge Box and Test Box and Wire Box. And uh, sorry, I didn't mention Cold Box. I think I'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, hold that thought. And Foundeo that I've mentioned, you know, Fixinator and FuseGuard and HackMyCF and other tools, definitely check them out. And Integral, the people that make Fusion Reactor, you should also check out Nerd Vision if you haven't heard of that before. See that. Uh, and then Lucy, the open source CFML engine. You know, again, I'm just saying these are things that are out there as things that the CF community should at least be aware of, should know what they're about. And I just want to point out that if you do a search for Cold Fusion, excuse me, at GitHub, it returns over 2,200 projects and more than 300 of them show an update date of 2021 or greater. So there's plenty of activity even on GitHub about Cold Fusion. And then framework-wise, again, many frameworks have come and gone, but some still stand the test of time. Coldbox, primarily known by a lot of people. CF Wheels had kind of fallen into a quietness, and then it's recently been revived. And so check out both of those. And then there's Framework One, which again, has been around forever, hasn't evolved much recently, but is still going strong. Some people love it. Conversations going on this week in the community have people highlighting how much they love it still now. So, and there are still others. And there's also other kinds of CF frameworks. I just want to point out that uh, there's REST frameworks, there's uh, dependency injection frameworks, and there's CMSs and uh, content boxes. One, Common Spot, Contents, Far Cry, Preside, and others. So there's still people doing CMSs written in CFML. Maybe some of them might only run on Lucy or they work differently with CF or Lucy or whatever, but you know, I'll leave you to explore those on your own. And then I wanna end by pointing out that there's always resources where you can learn more. And most importantly, I wanna make this point that the CF docs are a lot more than just the CFML reference. Sadly, when you Google most stuff, most stuff in, CF, uh, in Google about Cold Fusion, you get taken to the CFML reference and that's like when you look for a word, you get taken to a dictionary. And you're not going to learn how to speak a language by reading a dictionary. And yet that's what Google tends to do is take you to the dictionary. And that's not bad. But I just want to say there's more to the docs than just the reference. So I did a blog post five years ago. And I'd say the same things now. And I've checked it. And the links are all still accurate. Um, and it's, did you know that there's far more to the CF docs than just the CFML reference? So there's a developer guide, there's an installation guide, there's a, a CF builder guide, there's a getting started guide, there's just uh, there's security guides, there's so many things. So again, check out uh, that there's much more and see that blog post. Now I mentioned cfdocs.org, that's a community site that's existed for several years and it's contributed to by the community and some people in the community have pulled in parts of what may be in the CF docs, but they don't just copy it, right? That might even be a copyright violation. So it's mostly people creating their own variant of the docs about a particular topic. Well, again, they may or may not go back, like maybe they wrote that seven years ago and they haven't gone back and said, oh, I see that that thing I wrote that topic about has evolved in CF. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. 
with both CF and with Lucy. So again, I'm not complaining. It's an open source. Anybody can contribute. If you see a problem and it's important to you, go ahead and fix it. Um, I'm just saying that there's, I, I've seen a lot of situations where even the CF doc site did not help somebody see the possibilities that were there. Then there's from Ortis, learn modern CFML in hundred minutes from our next speaker, Luis Mahano. And it's at moderncfml.ortisbooks.com. And that is a book, an online book that takes you from zero to 60 in learning CFML and learning how to do it in more modern ways. And again, if you've got new developers, either uh, coming from another language or maybe they've been doing CFML for years, but they haven't really been paying attention to how it's modern, point them all to that learn modern CFML in 100 minutes. It's a couple hours you know, to go through and you will become far more aware. And it's definitely got examples and links to resources. So I definitely highly recommend it. Then there's Learn CF in a Week, which has been around again forever. And it's started to get some um, motivation to be updated a couple of years ago, but I think it's, it's, I haven't seen too much recently, but it doesn't matter. Even what's there now is still valuable. So if you're looking to introduce people to CFML, besides what I've shown so far, point them to Learn CF in a Week. And it doesn't take you a week really to go through it all. It's just, it was designed to think, hey, if you just look a couple times a day over a week, you would learn a lot. So definitely recommend it. And then the Modernize or Die podcast, also from Ortis. It's the Modernize or Die CFML News Edition that I'm referring to. It's a weekly podcast every Tuesday at noon central time. Uh, you can follow it live if you want and participate, or it's made available as a podcast afterwards. So it keeps up on everything going on in the community from conferences to uh, new changes to languages and frameworks and things like that. Um, people highlighting blogs and videos of the week, VS Code tips of the week, uh, job opportunities in CFML, just so much. So I'll leave you to learn more about that. Just go check it out. I highly recommend everybody listen to that. And then CF Alive podcast also been going on for a long time. And it sometimes it's recent stuff. Sometimes it's old. Be careful. I've seen a couple of recent uh, in the feeds things from some couple of years ago. So just pay attention to the date. But and the, even the things from a couple of years ago could be valuable. Um, you know, and, and and that's something that people ought to consider doing is sometimes there's great knowledge locked up in something that was given a couple of years ago. So it's not a bad idea to highlight something that was presented a couple of years ago. I need to do that more myself. And then cfcasts.com, that's a site also from Ortis, which highlights, has videos. It's an online video uh, place. And mostly they create them. They have some people from the outside create them and they organize them there. And some are free and some are commercial, but it's just another great learning resource. That's my point is all these are great ways to learn about and keep up with what's going on in the CF community. And then there's conferences like this Dev Week and in September into the box and in October, the Adobe CF Summit. So check all those out if you haven't been paying attention. All right. I just want to point out, I mentioned the cffiddle.org. There's also a corollary, tricf.com. These are both tools for testing CFML on different engines without you having to install anything. They're just browser-based ways to test your code. I wish I had time to show it. Check out Akbar Sate's site, akbarsate.com. He keeps up with each release with the blog posts and resources that are available about new features of each release. Highly recommend that. The online Cold Fusion Meetup is an online Cold Fusion user group that I've been running for 15 plus years. And um, Gavin's been very uh, helpful in the past few episodes doing a lot of a series on uh, APIs. So, and there's other talks too beyond just Gavin's. And then um, I do hidden gems talks on every release. And those are at my website, careheart.org slash presentations. And then there's lots more, lots more. And I just have a site called cf411.com where I keep track of all this stuff, all these resources, all these categories. I've got them, uh, not categories of language changes, but tools and resources. That's what CF411 is, is tools and resources of interest to CFers. And as far as getting help, I just want you to know there's the online Adobe forums. There's the CF portal that allows discussion areas. There's the CFML Slack, if you didn't know it. There's the Facebook CF programmers group. And then I just want to say quickly about Adobe and the future of CF, because sometimes people want to use that as a reason to question whether they should continue working with CF. There have been five releases of CF in the past 10 years, and there's been about 15 to 20 updates for every release. So that's a lot of updates, 100 plus, right? 
And then there's hundreds of bug fixes often in every release. And I say over each release, there in every update, there's often dozens. And over a given release, there's often hundreds. And you know, again, that means there's bugs, yes, but it also means they're fixing them. That's my point. And then there's support for CF versions for five years after they come out. And the next release is already in planning. And we'll probably be hearing about it soon, I think. I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying it's, the timing is right, that it should be coming up soon, that we'll hear about it. And then Adobe supports the Dev Week and the CF Summit conferences, these ongoing webinars that they offer that folks like Brian Sape and Mark Takata do and others. And they have that CF portal in the community forums. And they have a certification program. And that's another place to learn. I should have added that. That's another way to learn. And they offer free install support, the free trial, the free developer edition. I'm just trying to say that Adobe's very committed to CF and offers lots of ways to help. And that's it. We're almost just about done. Lastly, I want to say, um, if you are trying to find developers, help them see that these options for modern CFML exist. They should find it's much more familiar than they likely thought coming in. And for management buy-in, help them see that CF isn't a dead end. You might think it's a dead end, but it doesn't need to be a dead end. And refactoring doesn't have to presume that you're going to move everything off of CF. You could refactor within CFML and bring a lot of modernization, as well as cloud and um, cloud deployment, cloud integration. You don't have to leave CF to get those things. That's all I'm trying to highlight. And then a last reminder and a plea, and we'll talk about it as a quiz. If you ask a CF skeptic, does CF support these things? Does it support closures, promises, futures, lambdas, fat arrow functions, functional programming, harder functions, just so, you know, on and on and on and on and on. Um, so I'll just leave that there to say that's a quick summary of, like, let's say we picked like 10 or 12 key things that were new. The average CF person, and even, and certainly outsiders, will not know that. So with that, we're done. Thanks for uh, your attention. I welcome feedback, corrections, questions, and challenges. My contact information to follow up is here. I shouldn't have had those be bullets. And then uh, I'm going to look at, uh, it's not free, but as a resource, the Cold Fusion Specialist. There you go. So the Cold Fusion Specialist is the certification program. And if you just Google Cold Fusion certification, you will find a link to the Cold Fusion certification. And it is not only a certification, but also a preparation. And it involves several hours, about 10 hours, I believe it is, of video. So you'll learn a lot from that. And thank you for the folks chiming in with uh, comments. I'm sorry, I see now we just went over by a minute. Apologize for that. Um, we are supposed to do a giveaway. Um, and let me um, say that you know, we I don't have time to do any kind of a fun quiz. I'll just say James, I noticed you, you chimed in a few times and offered those links. So James, I'll say you are the winner of the gift card today, James part 10. So James, uh, or Mark, if you're paying attention, whatever, somebody pay attention. That's our gotcha. Winner. I I got him. Thank you, Charlie. You betcha. <laughs> and no issue about going over. No problem. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, That's exactly. the great thing about it not being one after another like that. Because <laughs> last year, when the, when the hour was up, you just got cut off. And I was trying very much not to get cut off. Very, very much. All I'm right. For the comments. And I think there's no questions. They're just mostly comments. So again, thank you, everybody. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much, and especially Charlie, for sharing all of his knowledge and information and fun with us this morning. Um, everyone, if you could please, please, please give us feedback on Charlie, that the speakers really, really appreciate you uh, clicking those buttons and letting them know how they did. Um, they will get the feedback uh, anonymously to help them continue to improve their craft. Um, thanks again, Charlie. Uh, I've got a link here to your website, but I think everyone knows about careheart.org. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave this up for a little bit, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop Charlie out of here and uh, stay tuned because in just about 25 minutes, we are going to be having Luis Majano coming in and talking to us mm -hmm. about some other stuff. The Mahano, sorry. Mahano. That's twice. That's twice. I did his name wrong today. Charlie, what am I doing? <laughs> Luis Mahano. Oh, Mahano. I'm terrible. Uh, I mispronounced my own name. <laughs> <laughs> you got mine right. Thank you for that. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. And that's not a given. Awesome. Trust me, that's not a given. So again, thanks everybody. Till again.
<laughs> Thanks again, Charlie. See you guys. <laughs> we're just going to keep this up for another five minutes or so make sure everyone gets the chance to give charlie some feedback really really appreciate you doing that um these metrics are very, very important for our speakers uh, to just kind of know what they're talking about, what they're doing. 